Hello and welcome to 2020 and my channel. I'm Mr. Tie-Dye and today we're going to do a... What are we doing today? We're doing a pentagram. I've had a few requests for it over the last few months, so I'm going to get in and make one up. I've never done one, but I did the math for it, so we're just going to go for it. So what I have is a t-shirt that's been soaked in soda ash. It's been spun out, so it's just barely damp here. And then I've centered it or folded it in half, um, basically by tucking one sleeve into the other. I line up the same the seams over here, and I lined up the shoulder seam to get it centered. I do have a video, and I can put a link to that down below this video here in the description box. But what we're going to do is we're going to work on just the front of the t-shirt. So once I move that one back then the next thing that I'm going to do is figure out how big I want my pentagram to be and mark that off so what I have here is my handy dandy circle maker which is just a string tied to a washable marker here and this here is a crazy art the other brand of washable marker I've used is Crayola they both seem to wash out pretty good so I've made a mark on my t-shirt here and basically what I need to do is figure out just how big I want to make it. I'm going to go at 12 inches, so I'm going to make a line there at 6 inches. That will give me a 12 inch circle. So I'm just going to hold my finger right here on this dot here and move my pin out to my 6 inch mark. Once I have that lined up, then I can hold that down and then I can draw my circle on just by holding this string tight okay so there's the size of my pentagram and the next thing we're going to do is the math part so I'm going to line my protractor up here on my line get it all centered and then I'm going to draw some lines here. The first one is at 36 degrees. Next one's at 72. Then we're going to 108. And then 144. And then I'm going to extend those lines out from this center point. So you just need a straight edge and you line up one end here at the center point and then just follow each one of your lines out. So use that same center point for each one of them. Okay, yeah, I guess I don't need to draw them all the way down to the point there. So the next thing we're going to do is fold on these lines here. So, oh, it's a second. Okay. So first thing I'm going to do is fold along this line here. That's going to be in my crease there. So I'm holding my center point here. This is right where I marked my dot and measured my circle out from. So then I'm lining the bottom edge of the t-shirt right up with that second line. So the first line is folded in here, the one that I marked at one, uh, 144. And then I'm going to pick this up and I'm going to grab this point and I'm going to grab right over here making sure that you're grabbing all of the layers there and I'm going to flop this under. So that put this seam right here at this other line here. So now I'm going to fold on that line over to this one. And then we're going to flop that back under and fold this last line up on top here. Oop. 
you got to just make sure that everything is laying flat so that things line up the way you want them to. Okay. Now the next thing I'm going to do here a second. Sorry, I had a dry throat and I needed a drink of water here. <clears throat> okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go from this outer edge of the circle and the this is the point where you decide where you want the point of the pentagram to be. If you want it to be pointing up towards your neck, then you're going to start from this point here where your collar is, and you're going to go up at an angle here at 162 degrees. So I'm going to line this up. Line up 162. And draw my line out here. So then, like I said, I'm going right from this line here, the outer edge of this circle here. This is the circle we drew on at the beginning. And we're going from that out at 162 degrees. And like I say, this here is going to put the point now up here at the top of the collar. If you want it pointing down, then you would just start on the other side of the t-shirt here the one without the collar on it and you would do that same line so I can kind of see my circle so I could just draw my circle and do the same thing go up that 162 and that would make the pentagram upside down if you want it facing up with the point facing up then that's where you start from and then for my other line that I need I'm gonna go at 90 degrees so I'm gonna line my 90 degree corner up right flat with this edge here And then I'm going to line up just right where my line, when I drew the 162 degrees line up here, it went all the way up to this edge. So now I'm going to draw from that same point, and I'm going to go straight down at 90 degrees. Okay. So mathematically, these are my lines that I need to fold now. So what I'm going to do is fold this one up, tie it off, fold this one down, tie it off, and fold that one up and tie it off. So I'm going to fold with uh, tie with kite string. If you want to do it with sinew, that's another possibility. You could tie with sinew and give yourself some white lines there. But I'm going to dye my pentagram in black. So. I'm going to go ahead and just fold mine and tie it with kite string. That way I can get my die to go down inside there. So I'm going to tie this off, and but I'm going to leave it tied here, I think. So I'm just going to pull some extra string out, set that out of my way. And I'm going to fold up this next line here. Now just trying to get this turned around so that I can tie this off here. So I already I left my my string tied here where I tied this other spot. So now from there I can just tie this, wrap this right around here on my line. And then I'm going to tie that one off in the same place and then we'll cut the string. Um, actually, I guess we can leave that uh, tied and we can just wrap that back up again. So now for this last line, this here is my circle. So these two lines here for my star and for the inner lines in there. And now we're going to fold this last one up. The main thing is making sure that you don't pull out your other fold here. 
that's the tricky part here. So you got to get this first crease started here without losing your folds in there. So you got to just be careful there that you don't pull too hard or you'll pull those folds out. And I guess that's a, another reason to leave this tied up so that I can wrap that back up, try to give it a little bit of support, and then wrap that around. So what I did, I had tied here. Let's zoom in so you can see what I'm doing here. So I had it tied off here and I just wrapped it back up here around and then I went around my last line that I folded there. So those are my three lines for my pentagram. So I'm going to wrap that around a couple more times. And then I'm going to go up just a little bit to give myself a little bit more support here. So I'm just tying another line just to make sure that I don't pull too tight on this here. And then we're going to wrap this back down. I'm going to tie around this little bit just to give that some more support. So I just kind of wrap this around in different areas to give me more support where I need it. And this last one here I'm going to tie around this here part and then we'll come back down and tie off in the same place now I just kind of wrapped around all different places here I didn't have any specific technique for that I'm just trying to provide support in the different areas so that as I pick this up and dye it and I'm going to be using my cuticle pusher when I'm pushing dye down inside so I want to make sure that as I'm doing all of that, I don't let any of these folds out. This here is the, the fold that's going to come out the easiest. This is the fold that's going to come out the easiest right here. So this is the reason why I want to have a few wraps around here. I wrapped it around that way just to make sure that that fold is secure. Probably making this more complicated than it needs to be, but... That's okay. Hopefully you guys can follow these directions and like I say, I haven't actually tied a pentagram before so we'll just see how this works out here. So now for the rest of the t-shirt, I'm just going to, let's see, I'm going to do a spine up the back and then we'll scrunch the rest of it up. In fact, let's do a zigzag spine a little bit. We're going to do diamond shape spine going up the back. So I'm just drawing a line in diamond shapes just for fun. didn't see that. Okay, so I drew, instead of just going straight up, I'm going to do a zigzag diamond shape pattern on the back for the spine. And I do have a spine video where I just fold straight up just like three or four inches up the back. And you can do that. You can just kind of mix and match this back up however you like just to put an interesting extra little detail into your tie-dye. Almost buckled that one, but if you're careful, you could squeeze those back down. <laughs> All right, well, that's a happy little spine right there. All right, so we're going to tie that off and then we're going to scrunch the rest of this t shirt up and get some dye splashed on it. Okay, 
and then for all of these extras, since I didn't fold straight up here, I got some extra little bits here, so I just need to kind of flatten those out the best that I can. So once I kind of have it tied just a little bit, then I can use my cuticle pusher to push some of these folds down inside here, make sure none of them are flopped over each other. And then also if you just kind of pull on these a little bit, you get some more of those creases to fall right into place here. Now we're going to just scrunch the rest of this. Whenever you have the arms tucked one inside of the other from centering the t-shirt or folding it in half, then you can just tuck them right into their own armhole here and scrunch them up. Sometimes I'll just, once I kind of have all of the pieces in there, I'll just grab the center of that and twist a little bit. That just helps take up some of the extra fabric there. And then you can just scrunch that all down. And then like I say, I'm just trying to flatten this out. On the pentagram, I tied a little extra space. This here is the actual edge of my pentagram up here. But this here is where I tied it off. And that's because when I pull all this extra fabric out, I didn't want to take a chance of pulling out my pentagram. So that's a nice thing to do is just give yourself a little extra working room there so that when you're doing the rest of your flattening, folding, and scrunching, you're not risking pulling your pattern out. And then we're going to use the magical kite string to tie this up with. I do have a video on kite string and sinew and how I use both of them. I'll put a link to that down in the description box also. But you can also use rubber bands for this if you want or whatever method of tying you like. I just like the kite string. The kite string is fairly cheap and it just allows me to tighten things up where I want them. Or on the rubber bands, sometimes the rubber bands are just as tight as they are and you can't adjust that too much. Aside from having different size rubber bands. So, anyway, you can choose your method that you like and go with that. I'll come up a new come up with a new method of tying something up. Alrighty. So there is my pentagram, and like I said, I'm going to mark out my, my lines here. Okay, so here's my first my circle, this here is the star shape, and this is the inner lines here. And I'm going to draw the same ones on the other side just to make sure that I'm putting my die in the same place. Okay, I'm going to get some gloves on. We'll come back and put some color on this. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use thick black dye. And I do have a recipe that I'll put down below on how I make the thick black dye. I've got a couple of them. Um, this here is using the second method with the really finely ground uh, soda <laughs> sodium alginate. But I think I prefer the other method so I'm still doing some more testing on both of these and I'll determine which method I really prefer the best. But This one here sometimes it feels like the the sodium alginate can get a little bit gummy and build up just I can see it on my cuticle pusher here when I'm pushing things inside so I'll put both of the recipes down but right now I think the first method the longer method is my preferred method for doing the, the sodium alginate 
the thickened water. And this once again, since there are so many layers, I'm going to put several coats of this thickened dye on here because it's not going to soak in as far on its own as regular dye would. But regular dye is going to spread out and give me thicker lines. It's still possible, but this here is just easier. You just have to push it in manually. So you can try either method that you like. Making the pentagram bigger would make it easier to use just regular dye because then if your line gets a little thick it's not too bad. If it gets too thick on this here there's two little little spaces here that it just makes it harder. Anyway, so we're going to color the outer circle now. Okay, now it's time to put some color on the pentagram. So I'm going to dye mine in red here. Okay, so now I've got this here, uh, the pentagram colored in here, and got the color of the dyes squished down in there pretty good. I'm going to put some yellow around the outside here real quick, and then I'm going to add another layer of the black in there and push it in. Just because I want to make sure this black, I get a nice solid pentagram in here. And sometimes it's better to do a few layers of the black and then add the the red in because that way the black isn't going to try to spread out to the sides it's going to try to soak down inside if there's white areas in there still so i don't do the black all of it all at one time i like to get my fill color in and then come back and do another layer of the black i hope that makes sense Same thing here, put some yellow around the outside. And then we're going to do more black on this side too. And that should give me a really nice pentagram now. Okay, now we're going to dye the rest of the t-shirt in fire colors, except for the spine up the back. So I'm going to just start by putting a coat of yellow down, and then I'm going to add some orange on top of that. Okay, before I flip this back over, <clears throat> I just want to take some of that excess dye out of this here because that black can get kind of messy when you got that thick black dye on there. So I'm just trying to soak some of that excess up. Now for the spine. I'm going to just use the red and the black with that. So I'm just going to alternate back and forth here.
And this is just my regular black dye. It's not thickened dye or anything. Now I'm going to alternate my colors. So wherever I have the black, I'm going to put red now. And then wherever the red is, I'm putting black. So that's the spine, the DNA spine. It's just flipping the colors or shifting them by one space. And that'll be explained better in my spine video. So you can look that up or there should be a link down in the description box. I'll try to remember to put that down there. If I've forgotten, somebody please let me know and I will add that in there. But for my fire colors, I'm going to add some black over top. Not a lot, but just a little bit to really give me some more contrast popping out there. So I'm just using this small tip bottle here so that I can just lightly squeeze on there and I'm leaving just a little bit of a gap between where I put my spine just so that the black doesn't seep into there since I have black in the spine. It's nice to have color separation. It just makes the design pop better and I'm also doing the same thing here. I'm leaving a gap between where my line is and where I'm putting the black for the pentagram and there we have it so I'm gonna let this bat for 48 hours and then I'll probably do a reveal on this one just because I haven't made one of these before and I'm anxious to see how it comes out too so please like and share my videos wherever they're allowed and thank you for coming and watching and learning from me I hope to inspire and help you improve your art peace out Okay, here's another one I've had several requests for, and I haven't... This is the first one that I've actually made. Uh, I've done a five-pointed star before, but I haven't done a pentagram. And somebody asked for a pentagram recently, so... I did a little bit of math and came up with this t-shirt. So let's open it up and see how I did for my first time on the pentagram. Okay, here is the pentagram. So there's my pentagram that came out pretty decent. And then I did kind of a wavy spine up the back just to do something a little bit different. So there's my wavy spine and the pentagram. Yay!